Right before we jump into this video, have you signed up for the Fronos Photo email list? Well, if you haven't, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and congratulations on picking up a Nikon D3500. In this video, I wanna help you understand the outside of the camera, all of the menu settings inside of the camera, and how I would personally set it up if I was using this camera. So if you're new to my videos, please go ahead and give this a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can check out all of the other videos that I create and release. And there's also 3,000 past videos for you to check out if you feel the need to check them out. So now let's run through the outside of this camera first, starting with the battery. This is where the battery goes. On the bottom of the camera, you flick this button, battery comes out. I always recommend having two batteries just in case something happens to the first battery. It's always nice to have a backup. They're pretty small, they're not terribly too expensive, and you should get in the five, 600 shot range depending on how you're shooting and how much video you're shooting it should be pretty good. So definitely get two of those. So to put it in, it only goes in one way. Just follow the exact shape like you were trying to use one of those Fisher Price things with the hammer where you put the circle through the square, but you actually don't put the circle through the square. It lines up and it fits. Move the orange thing out of the way, pop this down, push it in, you hear a click, shut the door, it locks in. Now the battery is inside the camera. Over here on the right side of the camera, you have where your SD card goes in. To do this, you just slide the door open like that. It flips and flops just, you know, just like that. Could be a musical instrument, but don't break that. You don't want to break it. Your card is right here. This is an SD card. There's only one way to put it into the camera. In this case, I have the label facing me. The notch is in the top right that is cut out. There's a picture inside the door somewhere. At least there used to be. Yeah, there's a picture here somewhere. And then all you do is you pop it in here, click it in, hear the click, you're good to go, shut the door, and there you have it. Moving to the top of the camera, top front, because this is the top and this is the front. This is your on and off switch. Obviously it's simple. Flick this way on, flick that way off. Right here is your shutter button. This is what you're gonna use to take the pictures, but it's also what you're gonna use to do your autofocus. When you press it halfway down, you'll feel like a mini click. When you press it all the way down, you'll get a full click. So to press it all the way down, you're gonna take a picture, or halfway down, it's gonna do your autofocus, especially when you're in continuous autofocus. It's just, it's really simple once you get a feel for this. Just practice, sit there, do it without shooting a picture and you'll fully understand how it works. Right here is an exposure compensation button. Right next to that is your record button. It's red, it's the record button. When you wanna shoot video, you press it. When you wanna stop recording video, you press that. This lever right here that says LV on it is your live view option. You go ahead and you swing that back and it allows you to go into live view, which means you're gonna be using the LCD screen to shoot and not the viewfinder. So speaking of LCD screen, this is your LCD screen right here. It is not a touch screen, so you do not have touch screen functionality. This is your viewfinder, your optical viewfinder, where you look through and you will see through the front of the lens. What you see is basically what you're going to get right through that lens. Moving back to the top of the camera, right here, this is a command dial to control changing your shutter speed. So when you turn this, your shutter speed's going to change. In order to change your aperture, you're gonna hold down this button right here, as well as turn this dial at the same time. Now that's for the advanced modes when you're shooting in non-auto modes and you need to control things manually, you're gonna go ahead and do that. I'll show you more on that a little later. Now let's go around the top dial. When you get the camera, it's gonna be in full auto, which is green mode. I'm gonna turn it on because I wanna show you something. When I press the button, Nothing happens. Oh, you know why nothing happens? Because this lens that it comes with, which is an 18 to 55, is locked. In order to unlock it, I have to press this button and turn it, and now it's officially unlocked. I can press the button. And when I press it, the flash pops up because I'm in a dark situation and it thinks I need to add flash. Now what if you're in a situation where, hey, I can't use flash because there's a stage performance going on. 
put the flash down, look at this top dial, you can turn it to the no smoking sign, or in this case, the no lightning sign, which means the flash will not pop up. Not at all, but it will still take pictures. So if you're in a situation where you don't want the flash to pop up, just go into the no flash sign right there. The next mode around the dial, that is a portrait mode. Then we have, what is, oh, running man mode, my favorite. So if you're gonna shoot sports, you're gonna go ahead and go into running man mode. You've got the flower, which is technically, they say macro, but that's for more close up. What's happening in these modes, these are presets inside the camera that are gonna give you the general settings for that type of thing that you're photographing. It's okay to be in these auto modes when you start out, but in the future, you're gonna start jumping into more of the manual modes and taking control of your camera. But when you're just starting out, just go out there and shoot, try the different modes, see what works for you, and then in the future, I've created a video guide called the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto, which is gonna explain everything you need to do to understand how to get out of auto. And when you're ready for that, just go to fronosphoto.com guide to get a preview as well as to purchase it. Moving around the dial, we've got night portrait. So that's for if you're shooting somebody, a, a portrait at night, it's gonna pop up the flash. Use a slower shutter speed, which is gonna bring in some light from the background, but allow you to still get a nice portrait photo uh, a nicely lit portrait photo as best as it can do. Next up, we have effects mode. In order to change the effects mode, you go ahead and you scroll this back dial. I personally don't recommend using effects mode. It's kind of like burnt in Instagram filters. If you wanna have like uh, uh, something go majorly pop, you can go through those modes. You can try them out, but really they're very amateurish. But if you're just going out and shooting photos and you just wanna play with those modes, Go ahead and do that. Moving around to the top of the camera, right here, this is your hot shoe. This is where you're gonna put a microphone to record, though this camera doesn't have an input for a microphone, so you're probably not putting a microphone there unless it's a separate recorder that can record internally. You can also put a flash here. If this flash that pops up isn't enough for you, you can purchase another flash for the outside of the camera. Moving around to the side of the camera, we have what looks to be a USB plug as well as an HDMI port. So if you wanna connect it to a TV to show your images or show your video, you can do that right through the HDMI port. Going around to the bottom of the camera, this is where you have your tripod socket. If you're gonna ever set this up on a tripod, this is where it screws right in to either the tripod itself, or if it's a more expensive tripod, it goes into the tripod plate. Moving around to the back of the camera, let's start back here where you have a lightning bolt. That's to change the different flash settings. So when the flash is popped up, if you hold down the lightning bolt and you turn the back dial, you're gonna go through different flash settings and different flash modes. Like I said before, this is your LCD screen. It's not touchscreen, still not touchscreen, though it would be interesting if it was. You have your viewfinder, that's what you look through, and I already told you about that. Up here, you have an info button, so that will bring on some different info on the back of the screen. It actually turns off the info display and turns it back on. You have an AEL for auto exposure lock as well as auto focus lock. So this is another way of focusing the camera and locking in exposure. If you're in the auto mode, you're probably not using this, so don't really worry about it, because honestly, I don't worry about it, and I'm a full-time professional, and I don't worry about that button ever. So moving below there, you've got a play button, which will play back the pictures or videos that you've taken. The menu button allows you to get into the menu so that you can make some changes. Next to that is an I button, which brings up different info on the back of the screen. It allows you to quickly change different settings. It's actually pretty quick to get to that. It, it's Think of it as a quick setting option. You would hit it, things pop up on the screen, which I'll show you later, and you can change different settings right there. This is your D-pad for moving the focusing point on the screen, as well as arrowing through the different menu settings. The OK button is in the middle. That's basically your Enter button. Then when you're playing back photos, if you want to zoom in, you go ahead and you can zoom in on that using the top button. And on the bottom, right below there, you've got a negative magnifying glass, which is how you zoom back out. Moving over to the right-hand side, the, the, the furthest right bottom of the camera, you've got a trash can and Oscar the Grouch isn't coming out to play today, though if I do get angry, he's coming out to play. This is how you delete images. I always recommend you do not delete images on the camera. You save that for later. Memory cards are cheap. Do not fill them up because 
Well, that means you haven't offloaded your images ever. So just, it's a big, it's a good recommendation that you don't want to basically accidentally delete something on this small screen that would have looked good on your bigger screen. So I try to tell people not to delete on the camera. Above there with the multiple frames, that's how you can change how many frames a second you're gonna shoot when you are shooting multiple frames. Moving up to next to the viewfinder, you have a diopter. The diopter is for people who wear glasses or who don't wear glasses and just wanna get something clearer through the viewfinder. You just go ahead and turn it, just like that. And it's nice and it changes the diopter. So that's where your diopter is. A lot of people don't really know what that does, so now you do. Now, one of the most important things is taking a lens off and putting a lens on a camera. I know the first time you do this, you may be a little nervous because you're like, I've never done this, I don't wanna break the camera, and that's a good mentality to have up front, but there's only a couple of ways you're gonna break this, and I'll tell you about some of those. But this is how you take the lens off the camera. You press this button right here, that is your lens release button. I'm gonna turn it away from me and then the lens comes off. To put it back on or to put the lens on the first time, line up the white dot right there with the white dot on the camera, turn it towards you, hear the click, and now this lens is attached. But let me take it off again and just show you what's inside here. Right inside here is the mirror box. This is a mirror that flips out of the way when you take a picture, which then exposes the image sensor to the light to capture the image that you're taking. You never wanna to touch this. You always wanna turn the camera off before you take a lens off. It's just a good practice to get into, but never touch the mirror inside the camera. Now, sometimes it may look like you have dust on the mirror when you're shooting images and you're looking through the viewfinder, but what you're actually seeing is dust on the mirror. The mirror flips out of the way when you take a picture, which means that dust will not translate to your image. So don't worry about the dust on there and don't try to touch it and don't try to clean it with a cloth. Never touch anything inside of this camera. So guys, that's the basic rundown of the outside of the camera and how to put a lens on. Now let's jump into the menu system. Now before I get into showing you how I would set the menu system, I need to explain to you why this red box thing is here because it's actually recording my menu system so that we can play it back so you can see exactly what I see or what you're gonna see on the back of the camera. So that's why it's sitting here. Also, I am going through the menu settings while I'm in manual mode because in the auto modes, which is guide mode, auto, the no flash thing, and all of the other pictures around the wheel, other than P, S, A, and M, don't give you all of the same settings. So you don't have access to everything because the camera manufacturer knows that you are shooting in full auto and that they really don't want you making changes because they think you'll get the best results by just shooting. Now, I feel you'll get the best results in the future as you start to unlock the power of what the camera can do by going into manual. So if you're looking through your system and going, well, I don't see that on my screen, well, just switch into manual and get out of auto. So now let's run through starting with the playback menu. The playback menu is the menus with all of the settings for playing back the images after you take them. Delete, not gonna do it, not gonna do it, wouldn't be prudent not gonna delete anything right now. Playback folder, all, meaning it's gonna play back all of the photos in all of the folders that are on the camera. Playback display options. Let me show you what this means. Well, there would be none. In order to change this and check it, I hit the right button on the D-pad, and that allows me to check or uncheck the box. So I'm gonna put none, image only, highlights, RGB, shooting data, overview, and then to lock it in, I hit OK. Now let me show you what that is by hitting the play button. I have some really amazing photos on this camera right now, so let me show you what's going on. If I hit over to the right or over to the left, that's how I rotate images. If I hit up, that's how I change through those different settings. So you can see that in this mode, it's showing me a histogram, which is this white line, this white spike that you're seeing. You've got my shutter speed, one one hundredth of a second, F3.5, ISO 12,800. You have all of these different settings. Uh, it's telling me what they were shot in. As I keep rotating through, you can see there's more information that pops up on the screen. Some of it you may need, 
some of it you may not. Now you can change that again. We go back into menu and we're like, well, I didn't need RGB histogram. I don't need the highlights or the overview. So I just want none and shooting data and I hit okay. So what happens sometimes is you may be trying to show somebody your images and you're like, how did I get this thing on the screen? Just hit up or down and then left or right will rotate through the images. It's pretty easy. Image review, what this means, hey, do you see this question mark on the bottom of the screen, guys? If I hit this right here next to the minus magnifying glass sign, if I hit the question mark, it brings up basically a user's guide which explains things. Choose whether to display new images in the monitor immediately after shooting. So let me go ahead and hit back there. I turn this off. The reason I turn this off, I don't want to take a picture and then have the screen turn on and then take a picture and have the screen turn on again. It's actually kind of annoying and it will make you a worse photographer. The reason is you'll take a picture and then you'll look at it, then you'll take a picture and you'll look at it and you'll miss all of the pictures you should be capturing. So if you wanna review the images, take a bunch of them, then hit the play button again and you can then review the images. Next up, we have auto image rotation, which is on. I leave this on on so that when you get into the computer, whether if you shoot a vertical image, it's gonna show up as a vertical image in the computer. Now, rotate tall is currently on. What that means is when I hit the play button right now and I go to a vertical image, it's showing tall on the back of the screen, which means it's not really filling the whole screen, which makes it harder to see. I personally don't like that. If you like that, go ahead and leave it on. But what I personally do is turn it off. So I go over, I hit, I hit over to select it. Then I hit OK to lock it in. Let's go play back that image. And you see, you now have to rotate the screen vertically. But now you see the entire image filling the screen, which I personally think is much better. Back through the menu, we got slideshow, I don't even touch. We've got ratings, I don't touch ratings at all. And select to send a smart device, that's if you're, gonna, if you're going to use the Bluetooth mode, you can then select the images you want to send to that device. Moving on to the next menu, which is the shooting menu, which is actually a pretty in-depth menu. If you don't see all these options again that I see, that's probably because you're in the auto modes. I am in manual mode over here, which means it's going to unlock more of the camera, so I can take more control of the menu system. Now, I do want to say that if you're in the guide mode, you're going to see a totally different menu system that's going to guide you through different ways to set it up. That's okay when you're first starting out, but when you want to take more advantage of what the camera is that you purchased, then go into manual and follow me as I set up this camera. So we're not going to reset the shooting menu because we honestly haven't set the shooting menu yet. Image quality, you've got JPEG basic at the bottom, defaults to JPEG normal, you have JPEG fine, you've got NEF which stands for RAW, and you've got NEF RAW plus JPEG fine. Now I personally set it to RAW, but that's because I want the best quality file that I possibly can get out of the camera. But when you're first starting out and you just are shooting pictures, you can just shoot JPEG fine. I think that if you're gonna shoot JPEGs, you shoot the best JPEG possible, which is JPEG fine. Now, I would personally recommend shooting RAW plus JPEG fine. Now, that's gonna take up more space on your memory card, but SD cards are fairly cheap. Now, RAW files are much larger because they have all the data that the camera is capturing, that the image sensor gets, it's becoming a RAW file. Now, when you do a JPEG file, it's a compressed file. It's throwing away extra data that the camera thinks you don't need to go ahead and compress that file, meaning it's baked, it's done, there's not a lot of editing you can do to it, and every time you edit and save, you are degrading the quality of that image, where a raw file, you can go back to it time and time again to go back to the raw ingredients and edit it to taste any way you like it. Now, now here's a good time for me to mention that if you're new to editing raw files, we have created 14 custom Lightroom presets, which will help you with one click or two clicks, get a really good starting point for editing your raw files. You can check that out at fronosphoto.com slash presets. There's 14 custom presets right there for you to check out on the page and see how they can work with your images. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are on sale currently for 40% off.
20% off. So if you don't think you ever want to edit the raw files or you don't want to save them for the, disk, for the future because they take up more space, then just set it to JPEG fine and move on. The reason I spent more time here is because obviously you see I shoot raw, it's on my shirt, it's on my wristbands, it's my main slogan, and that's how I shoot. Try it for yourself. Next up, image size. So we've got large, medium, and small. All I'll say here is always shoot large. The reason you wanna shoot large is you can dumb the file down later if you need to save space, but you can't dumb a file up if you start shooting small at six megapixels. So I shoot large right here. ISO sensitivity, you can come into the camera to change your ISO settings. It goes from 100 on the lower side, that's what you're gonna use on a brighter day. 100's for bright situations. And then in lower light situations, you've got something like 25,600. But keep in mind, when you go to higher ISOs, you're gonna get more noise and grain in your images, meaning they're not gonna be as clean as if you shot at 100 ISO, so keep that in mind. Some other people may wanna shoot in auto ISO, that's personal preference and up to you. I don't shoot in an auto ISO, but if you're not secure in how to set your shutter speed aperture and ISO, well, ISO auto may be a good option for you to personally start with. White balance, as a rule of thumb, when you shoot raw files, you have more control over tweaking your white balance after the fact. You can still tweak the JPEGs a little bit, but I still leave this in auto because the camera does a very good job with it. Picture controls, right now it's set to standard. Then you have neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, landscape, and flat. Keep in mind that when you set your picture control and you shoot JPEG, that's it. It's baking that in. Meaning, if you wanted to shoot a picture in monochrome and you're only shooting JPEG, it's only gonna be black and white. You will not have colored data. But if you shoot raw files, even with monochrome setting on, you will still see a preview in black and white on the camera, but you will be able to get the color back in the raw file when you're tweaking it. As another side note, when you shoot video, whatever your picture style is set to, your, uh, your picture control is set to, that's going to affect your video image, your video file. So if you're shooting in monochrome, then you're gonna get a monochrome video with no possibility of getting that color back. Generally speaking, standard, it's pretty fine. It does a pretty good job, so I leave it there. Color space, sRGB, I don't move that. Active D-lighting, I turn this off personally. I think you should turn it off no matter what you're shooting. Um, so moving on, you've got noise reduction. I, I personally turn this off. When you shoot at higher ISOs, you may see some noise or grain in your images. With noise reduction on, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see your image start to smooth out and it's gonna look weird. I rather see the noise and the grain than have that smoothed out, less sharp looking image. I rather have a more grainy image that's sharp than an image that looks just soft and smooth. So I turn that off. Vignette control, uh, this is another thing that I turn off. You could do either low or off. When you're doing images, you can Definitely correct for that in the raw file later. You've got auto distortion control. I leave that off as well. Focus modes, let me show you what those are. Uh, in the viewfinder, when you're shooting through the viewfinder and not using live view, you've got AFA, which is auto servo AF. That means the camera is gonna select the best auto focusing mode for you to use. Now, if you know that you're gonna shoot an inanimate object, you can use AFS. So those are subjects that aren't moving. What AFS does is it means that when you press the button halfway down and you hear the beep, if you have the beep on, it's gonna lock the focus in. So as long as your finger is pressed halfway down on the button, the focus isn't going to move. It's not gonna shift. If your subject moves or you move, your focus may start to miss. So that's where you need to press the button again to get your focus locked back in. Because if you lock in on something and they move 10 feet and then you take the picture, they're definitely gonna be out of focus. AFC is called continuous autofocus. This is what you use when you're trying to capture the kids running around, playing sports, playing soccer. Now, if you're in the auto modes, the camera's setting this stuff automatically for you. This is for when you're in manual. And then you've got manual focus. If you ever decide you want to manually focus your lens, 
Uh, I find no need to do that for the most part. I rely on the autofocus, which does a very nice job. I also don't recommend doing live view for shooting photos, but you can do live view for shooting movies. You've got single AFS for single servo. You've got manual focus if you want to manually focus your movies, or you have full-time servo AF, which is going to try to do a good job of keeping up with the subjects that it's trying to focus on. You're going to hear the ch 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 you're going to see the ch -ch 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 as it's focusing. Just understand that this continuous autofocus for video is not as good as a camcorder or some of the more expensive cameras. So moving out of this mode, go back. We've got AF area modes. You've got for your viewfinder, you've got single point AF, which is great when you're doing just AFS. So you would set it to single point. So wherever that point is inside your viewfinder, boom, you can lock in, see, where, see what you're focusing in on, and you're making the selection of the focusing point. Next is dynamic area AF, which I love using when I'm in AF continuous. So in continuous focus, I've got dynamic area AF, and it's gonna use a larger portion of the auto focusing sensors to make sure it's getting all the data so that you can get the best autofocus. 3D tracking using 11 points is pretty good. That's if you're shooting things that are moving super fast and you want to just focus on composition and shooting. The camera is going to track the subject using 3D tracking and it does a pretty good job. And then last is auto area AF where you're not even going to be able to select an auto focusing point and the camera is going to do all of the work for you. So generally speaking, 3D tracking is good if you want to let the camera track a subject automatically on its own. If you want to take more control when you're doing continuous autofocus, dynamic area AF is great. And if you're doing AFS single focus shooting portraits or inanimate objects, single point AF is a perfect option for you. Live view modes, you have the same thing. You've got face priority where it's going to find the face when you're shooting videos or shooting stills, and it's going to try and track there. Wide area AF is for subjects that are more erratically moving and they're moving a lot and you want to be able to get a wider area for focus. Boom, you got that. Normal area AF and then subject tracking AF is going to be really bad, to be honest with you, when you're shooting video. Don't expect great things from this. Try it out, but understand it's not going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. Moving on, we have built-in AF Assist Illuminator. On the front, there is a lamp, it's a light, that lights up when you're in low light situations to help find autofocus. That also becomes a distraction to people that are in front of the camera. That also lets them know that you're shooting pictures. So if you're trying to do candid images and they're seeing this light blink, it's distracting. I always turn this off. Boom, off. Metering modes. Personally, I leave this in matrix metering all the time. It's a really good, really solid metering mode. It's taking an average of the brightest and darkest area in the frame and giving the average setting for shooting that. So I would just stick in matrix metering mode. That's the best mode to use. Center weighted, I don't touch. Spot metering is if you're shooting a subject who's, say, against a bright background and you just want to get the exposure for them, you would then switch into spot metering in that situation. Next, we've got flash control for built-in flash. This is where you're going to go in to change the different flash modes. You're not going to change the flash modes. You kind of just want to leave this where it's at uh, unless you want to play around with it. If you're feeling frisky, then you could go ahead and play around with it. Optical VR. This particular lens, the 18-55, to has VR built in. I would just leave this on all the time, but if you're ever on a tripod, it's a good idea to turn this off because you don't need vibration reduction if you're on a tripod that's sturdy. What's gonna happen is it's gonna try and hunt and find and, and, and keep moving instead of just turning off if you're on a tripod. So if you're not on a tripod, go ahead and leave it on. Now this is where they buried movie settings. So we click into movie settings, we got frame size and frame rate starting with 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames a second, which is pretty good. That means it's going to do HD video at 60 frames a second. Now that's more reminiscent of video games and live TV that you watch uh, on the screen when, you, when you're watching TV because usually it's on a screen. If you want to get more of that cinematic movie look, you're going to want to shoot at 24 frames a second in 1080. They also give you an option of 1280 at 720, 60 frames, 50 frames, and that is really it. So honestly, if you want to try and do anything that's slow motion related, 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames a second, but most likely you'll be in the cinematic mode, 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames a second. 
Movie quality, we don't want it to be in normal because you don't want to dumb down your movies. You want the best quality possible, so I go into high quality personally for that. Microphone, for the most part, you're gonna be in auto, so the camera's gonna do all of the work for you. Or if you use an external microphone, you can't plug it into here, so you need a different way to record it, and then you can sync it up later. You can turn the microphone off altogether. You can also do manual sensitivity if you understand how that works. Uh, but for the most part, auto sensitivity is gonna do a very good job. Wind noise reduction, I leave this off. And manual movie settings, Ooh, I like manual movie settings. Let's hit that question mark. Question mark, choosing on allows the shutter speed and ISO sensitivity for movies to be selected manually. Rotate the mode dial to M and choose the shutter speed and sensitivity before recording movies. If you wanna take control of your camera and your movie shooting ability and not just let it do full auto, well then you can go ahead and put that to on. If you want the camera to do all the work, then go ahead and leave that off and that is your shooting menu. Are you enjoying this video and do you love learning things about photography and how to shoot better video? If so, go ahead and leave a comment down below, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell so you can be notified when new videos go live. I have over 3,000 fun and informative videos already posted on YouTube and I post new videos each and every week, so be sure to check them out when they go live. Now let's move on to the shooting menu where it says, Reset setup options. We're not doing that. We don't want to do that because we haven't even started yet. Format memory card. This is an important thing, so pay attention. Formatting a memory card means all images on memory card will be deleted. Okay, question mark? You never want to do this if you haven't backed up your images. The first thing you do when you get a new card or a fresh card, you're going to want to format it because that makes the camera talk to the card much easier, much better. That's what you want to do. You want to format it. But after you take your pictures, you want to make sure you back them up on your computer. You want to make sure they're backed up in the cloud, backed up to an external hard drive. Have Try to have three backups because it's not a matter of if something fails, it's a matter of when it's going to fail and I don't want it to happen to you. Take your pictures, put them on your hard drive. Then save them in a cloud somewhere or save them on an external hard drive somewhere. Please get into the habit of doing that because you don't want to lose all of the images. You spend all this money on a camera, you're learning how to use it, you're capturing awesome things hopefully, you don't want to lose it. But after you save everything and you know that it's backed up, then you can go yes and hit okay. But because I haven't done that yet to this card, I'm gonna hit no okay. So, then you have date stamp. You want this off. Nobody wants to look like an amateur that has a date stamped onto their image. Turn that off, leave it off. Time zone and date, this is where you go in and set the time zone, change the date during uh, daylight savings time, or if you ever need to change the time, you go into that setting. Language, you wanna change your language? You wanna learn how to speak Spanish? You wanna learn how to speak, what else does it let us do? Oh my God, they only let us do four languages. English, Spanish, French, and Portuguese, Brazilian, Portuguese. I know none of these, and I barely know English. Anyway, I'll keep it in English. We've got monitor brightness. If it's really bright outside, you can't see your screen, you can brighten it up, but for the most part, you're gonna be shooting through the camera. Info display format. Currently, it's set to this info display on the back of the screen. If you don't like this one and you want more of what the professional cameras show, you go up to the top one, which is classic. You can pick the black background with gray font or white font. You can go gray with black, or you can go Indiglo. I like Indiglo, so I'm going with Indiglo. And then, when you're in PSARM, which are the manual modes, you can do the same thing you can change it from the, what do they call this? They call this one graphic to classic. I just think classic makes the most sense. So that's what I personally set it to myself. Auto info display, this is something I turn off. I don't want that on, so I go ahead and I simply turn it off. Auto off timers, let me take a look at what we have in here. We have it set to custom so that the screen doesn't turn off. Generally speaking, normal is a good one for this. Self timer, you can do 
10 second, 20 second, five second, or two second. So that's if you want to shoot a group photo, a family photo, you would set it to 10 seconds, press the shutter button, and then quickly run to get in line with everybody else. Now what's cool is you could have it do up to nine photos. So you could have it go, hey, I want to take nine photos. And like, hey everybody, let's take a bunch of photos. Set it to 10 seconds, set it to nine photos, and then it's gonna take nine photos in a row, probably at about one second interval. Some of the more expensive cameras allow you to set the interval of what you're shooting. In this case, uh, it's probably gonna be about one second. Lock up mirror for cleaning. This is something that you don't wanna ever do unless you really know what you're doing. If you ever think that your sensor is dirty, call a professional, go to a camera store, if there's still camera stores around you, and see if they can help you get the dust off your sensor. Image dust off reference photo. If there's dust on the sensor, you can take a picture, a reference photo, and then the camera will basically mask that out for the rest of your photos. I've actually never used that option. Image comment is something cool. So if you wanna say photo by Jared Polin, or whatever comment you want, you could go ahead and enter all of this. So to input an image comment, we just hit over, and we can put something in like A, B, C, D, E. Anyway, whatever you wanna put in there. Now to input, you hit the OK button. And to get out of this, to lock it in and save it, you have to hit the magnifying glass with the plus. That was super confusing. I wasn't sure what OK meant, but that's how you get it. And now that is saved right there. Copyright information, same exact thing. Put in the artist, Jared Poland. Copyright Fronos Photo 2019, or whatever you want to put in there, you go through and do the same thing. The beep, high, low, or off. I personally like the beep for when I'm doing single focus. That's when beep comes on. It just lets me know that the camera says I'm in focus and it's good. Now, if you're in a quiet area, you may just want to turn that off or turn it to low. I personally leave it on low myself. Wow, it only gives you two options, low and high. It actually sounds like Pong or Arkanoid. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, flicker reduction is on auto. Leave that on auto because if you're in, say, a gymnasium shooting sports, those lights flicker, those old sodium vapor metal halide, and it's going to only take the picture when the flick is not actually happening, which is a good thing, so I leave that on auto. Buttons. I don't know, is Buttons a dog or something? My uncle's dog used to be named Buttons. That was like 30 years ago, the dog died, but still, I remember the dog was named Buttons. Assign AE lock, so you can change the different functions of this back, the AE lock buttons. You can go ahead and do AF on to control the autofocus if that's what you would like to do. Uh, shutter release button, AE lock, uh, that I leave on off. AF activation is on. AF activation means that we're using the shutter button to control the autofocus when you're shooting. Range finder, off. Don't touch it. Manual focus ring uh, in AF mode means when you turn this ring on the lens, you are actually controlling the lens manually to do your focus. File number sequence, I don't know why it defaults to off. It should be on on. What this means is when you take a picture and say you take 10 pictures, you take the card out, you come back another time, you put the card in. If it was off, it would start back at zero. If it was on, it starts at 11 if you already took 10 pictures. Storage folder, leave that there. File naming, you could change this to say JP1, that's me, JP1, or you could make it what FRO, DSC is perfectly fine. HDMI, that's only when you get into doing anything with the HDMI cable, which we're doing right into the camera now. You've got airplane mode is off. If you're ever flying and you wanna deactivate the Bluetooth or, or whatever, you would go ahead and say enable so that You'd, you're probably never gonna need to do that. Uh, connect to smart device. You go ahead and you toggle over, and it says, it shows us all the special information, app snap bridge. On your smart device, go to the app store and search for snap bridge. After, install, after installing, open the snap bridge app. So snap bridge is actually pretty cool, and to exit this, I go back into the menu. It's actually a pretty good app to allow you to transfer photos from the camera to your phone if you want to post them on social media quickly. Send to smart device auto means when you take a picture, if this was on, every picture you take would automatically get sent to that device. That's gonna use a lot more juice of your camera and of the device you're sending to. Bluetooth is currently off. Conformity marking is just this, that's all. 
All right, slot empty release lock. This means if there's no memory card in the camera, it will not let you take a picture. Leave that on lock. Reset all settings, not gonna do it because we just set them all up. And firmware version is firmware number one. This is where you would go to upgrade the firmware, update it if they ever release a firmware update. And that is your setup menu. Let me jump in here real quick and say, would you like to take better pictures in only 11 days? Well, if so, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com 11 days. The screen we're looking at right now is the info screen on the back of the camera. Remember when I said Indiglow? Well, that's what you see right here. You see this info button, this I button? Watch what happens when I hit it. When I hit it, it pulls up this quick menu which allows me to change my image quality, the image size, white balance, active D lighting, flash, ISO, the focus modes, which I already explained to you how those work, AF area mode, metering, set picture control, flash compensation, as well as exposure compensation. This is great. They never used to put this on these type of cameras, and now they do. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the info button again. It brings me back to this screen. Let me show you a couple of things here. I'm gonna turn the shutter dial, which is this one dial that rotates. You can see in manual that the shutter speed is changing, going up to 1 4,000th of a second. The faster the shutter speed, the shorter the shutter is open. It's gonna let in less light. So you need a ton of light to be at 1 4,000th of a second probably outside shooting sports. Now when you go slower, that's a much slower shutter speed. That means that the shutter is going to stay open longer. The longer the shutter stays open, the more possibility you have for motion blur to show up or for motion to happen because your hands are moving. If you want to understand fully how to get out of auto and what all of this means, fronosphoto.com slash guide to check out the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto. It will help you understand all of this stuff to get the photos that you're looking for. So let's start at the very top center of the screen. You see that hand, the one that's waving at you? It's like, hi, look at me, I'm Kermit the Frog. I'm waving to you. Yeah, they're not waving at you. That means that your VR, your vibration reduction is currently on. Next to that, to the right, you see the S. What that S means is that you're in single shot. When you press the shutter button down, you will get one picture even if you hold your finger on, down on the shutter. But to change that, remember those multiple frames on the back of the camera, this button? Go ahead and press that button and you can see that single frame is an option. You have continuous release, which as long as you hold the shutter button down, it's gonna continually shoot images at a couple frames per second. Then you've got quiet shutter release, which definitely isn't going to be quiet. Trust me, not gonna be quiet at all. And then you've got self timer. So you'll probably find yourself in single frame or in continuous. Probably continuous will be a perfect option because this isn't the fastest shooting camera in the world. You'll get a couple of frames a second, but that is a good mode to be in. Next to that on the right, you've got the musical note, which means the camera's gonna sing to you. That just means that it's going to beep when you're in single focus mode like I showed you earlier. Now all the way to the right, you've got your battery indicator, which shows you how much battery life you have left on your battery charge. Uh, down, down here on the middle of the screen, you see where it says 3.7 thousand. That's 3,700 images you can get on the card that's in the camera. The Blinky McBlinkerson that says ISO A means it's in ISO auto. As I change and move the camera, point it in different areas, it's changing the ISO. And all the way to the left of the screen, you've got where it says auto and a bunch of focusing points. Those are your focusing points. And right above there, M means you are in manual mode. So now we're in live view mode, meaning I just flicked this LV switch back towards me and it flipped the mirror up and locked it into place. This is the mode you're gonna be in if you wanna hold the camera out like this and use the screen to take photos, which I highly do not recommend because it's not very stable. Put your eye up against the viewfinder and shoot pictures like a professional photographer and you'll be much happier with the results. It's much easier to see what you're shooting when you look through the viewfinder and it's more stable to 
hold the camera. It's less shaky. But there's one thing I forgot to show you on the screen before. I showed you how to change the shutter speed by turning this dial, but how do we change the f-stop if we want to manually change it? Well, at the very beginning of the video, I told you you hold down the plus minus button right here because it actually has an aperture sign right next to it. You hold that down, you turn this dial, which was controlling the shutter speed, it's now controlling the aperture. So that was really simple. Now, when you're in this mode, this is where you go to shoot video. So when you wanna shoot video, you pop the LV switch back towards you, you hit the record button, the red one right here, and bam, I am now recording video. You can, on, you can actually see what we're doing right here. This is the Fro factory and we're recording. Well, it's not actually showing you Steven, but there's Steven out of focus a little bit up there recording what we are doing. To stop recording, oh, well, before we show stop recording, up near here during the top, you see that it gives you 20 minutes of video record time, 19 minutes and 35 seconds. That's where it's counting down. It will do that continuously. Now, when you get to the very end, it will stop. You can hit record again, and it will start back over. To the left of that, you can see that we're in 1080 at 24 frames a second, shooting in manual on the left side. And then down at the very bottom left-hand side, you see the microphone with A, and A means we are shooting with auto for the audio. And to stop recording, just hit that button again, and you are no longer recording the video. So there you have it, guys. I know that's a long video and a lot of information, but if this is your first camera, that run through should really help you get a good jump start on starting to capture the images that you've always hoped that you could capture and how to shoot some video. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And that is where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.